Reviews are a great way to write about the quality of a game. They cover the story, mechanics, what worked, and what didn't. They tell you what you can expect from a game. Even if you don't feel like reading the whole thing, you can scroll down to the bottom of the page and you see it right there. 7 out of 10. That sounds great. I see the number. I don't need to read the rest of the view. I know it's a good game now, right? Well, no. Do you know what that 7 means? Reviews are simply someone giving their opinion about this game. If you just look at the score, that tells you nothing about the game. It doesn't tell you why the author thought the game was good or not. It doesn't tell you about the mechanics, the story, characters, or controls, or anything. It tells you nothing. So what's that 7 mean? Well, you'd expect that it means that the author liked the game, thought it was fun, but not the greatest thing they've played. Well, what if a 7 is the worst score this author has ever given? Does it still seem like it was a good game? Well, that doesn't matter. Most people do read the reviews, or at least they skim it, so they can understand what the score means, and then they can decide for themselves whether it's a game they want to play or not. People are smart enough to do this, right? Well, go to a review site. Scroll down to the bottom of the review and read some of the comments. How many people are talking about specifically the score it got instead of the review it was given? It's a pretty sad place down here in the comments. Well, what do we do for the reviews then? Most people aren't going to read the entire review, and a score is an easy way to get the information out there. But it isn't the only way. There's a gaming news website that might not be the most reputable place for, well, anything. Kotaku. We all know about the corruption in this place, so that's a conversation for another time. What I do like is the format of their reviews, if not the content. They don't assign the game a score, instead they post something like this in the reviews. It's a short summary of the review. They say what kind of game it is, the developer, publisher, platform, release date, what they played, something good, something bad, and a short quote from the review. It's not much, but it's enough to give you an idea of what the author thought. You get a small amount of information, and then you can read more to get more. Another format I like is the ones given by Minute Gaming. They post points of what they liked, what they found neutral, and what they didn't like. It looks like this. There are great game reviews that don't use review scores at all. Go take a look at Total Biscuit or Bullet Berry. They do great reviews. They give their opinions on the game, and then they don't give it a score. When a game gets a score, people ignore the rest of the review. Once the game has a score, no one cares about what's written. This shouldn't be the case. When it comes down to it, the score shouldn't be what matter, since that score is subjective to the author. Dropping review scores will help people form their own opinions on the game. This is something the game industry sorely needs. Maybe one day we'll get there. If you'd like me to make a review on some games, let me know. It's something I'd like to give it a shot if there's enough interest. Even suggest me a game to review. Something new, something old, I'll do the best I can. 6.5 teraflops. The 1070 managed to match and even sometimes outperform the Fury X in nearly all games. Well, why is this? Water blocks look super cool and the fluid flowing through the tubes looks awesome. I'm really happy about the increase in cooling and the performance that I'll be able to get out of that, but the main reason why.